Homo sapiens have existed for over 300,000 years, but we're just one of many human species. Some earlier hominids resembled apes more than modern humans, while others spread globally millions of years before us. These diverse ancestors shaped our evolution, and their genetic legacy remains within us. Late Miocene. Seven million years ago, during the late Miocene, many strange animals roamed our planet. In Africa, deadly saber-toothed cats and large bears stalked the plains. At this time, our ancestors were still living in the trees, resembling modern-day chimpanzees. In their arboreal world, they were dominant. Not even leopards dared to challenge them. The trees were their safe haven, but on the ground, they were virtually defenseless. Life was relatively good for our ancestors until a geological shift changed everything. As the Himalayas were reforming, one of the African plates rifted, causing mountains to rise and block moisture from the Indian Ocean from reaching East Africa. This led to the region drying out, transforming lush forests into dry, mountainous areas. Our ancestors could no longer stay in the trees all day. They had to venture out to find food and water. On the ground, these early hominins were ill-suited to the new landscape and relied on large groups to survive in this dangerous environment. Four species of early hominins have been discovered in Africa. Though still very chimp-like, they began to exhibit more human traits, such as smaller jaws and canines. These early hominins lived harsh lives, often falling prey to predators. First men. 4.4 million years ago, human evolution began to accelerate with the emergence of the first Australopithecines. These early human ancestors were significant because they were the first to walk on two legs, or be bipedal. Walking on two legs offered many advantages, such as the ability to see over tall grass and long distances to spot predators. It also made them appear more intimidating to predators, much like how modern humans can scare off grizzly bears by making themselves look larger. Additionally, bipedalism uses only a quarter of the energy required for walking on all fours and frees up the arms for carrying food, young, and weapons. Australopithecines walked upright and had more human-like features, although their brains were only slightly larger than those of chimpanzees. Sexual dimorphism, where males and females of the same species differ in size, was pronounced in Australopithecines. Male Australopithecines could be up to 50% larger than females, with males standing about four and a half feet tall and weighing up to 100 pounds while females were closer to four feet tall and weighed about 70 pounds. One famous specimen of Australopithecus afarensis is Lucy, who was three foot seven inches tall and weighed 64 pounds. Despite having a small brain like a chimpanzee, Lucy's pelvis and leg bones were similar in structure and function to those of modern humans, proving that her species stood upright and walked erect. Lucy looked somewhat human, but also very primitive. She was a full-grown adult at only 12 years old when she died. Her fossil, dating back to 3.2 million years ago, shows evidence that a carnivore may have scavenged her after death. It was long thought that Australopithecus afarensis did not use tools, but recent evidence suggests otherwise. Tool marks on fossilized bones indicate that they likely used sharp stone tools. While they probably did not hunt large animals, the use of these tools to scavenge meat and access nutritious marrow was a significant leap in human development. This ability to use manufactured tools rather than just random rocks was revolutionary. There is also a theory that Australopithecines threw rocks for defense, which although difficult to prove, is plausible given that later human species used throwing spears and other devices. Australopithecines were our distant ancestors who struggled for survival, but managed to endure and lead to new species. Australopithecus afarensis eventually branched into two species, Australopithecus africanus and Paranthropus ethiopicus. While Africanus is the ancestor of all modern humans, Paranthropus ethiopicus became a separate species. Australopithecines lasted until about 2.1 million years ago, when Africanus evolved into a new lineage of apes known as Homo. Homo habilis. Homo habilis is the earliest known species in the Homo genus, aptly named handyman in Latin due to its pioneering use of tools. While not the first hominin to use stone flake tools, Homo habilis showed evidence of more widespread and sophisticated tool use. 
This capability was largely due to a significant increase in brain size compared to its predecessors. The Australopithecines and Paranthropus species had brain sizes ranging from 400 to 500 cubic centimeters, whereas Homo habilis had an average brain size of 640 cubic centimeters. This increased brain volume enhanced their ability to make tools, make decisions, and form social bonds. However, it also came with a high energy cost as modern human brains consume about 20% of our daily energy. Despite this, the bigger brain likely made Homo habilis more successful in its environment than previous hominins, although it was probably still an opportunistic omnivore rather than a hunter. Standing only about four feet tall, Homo habilis was a small and primitive hominid. Although classified in the Homo genus, some propose that it should be considered an Australopithecine instead. This species coexisted with other hominins, but proved to be more successful. Another species, Homo rudifensis, also lived during this time. While slightly different from Homo habilis, many consider them to be the same species. Regardless, both paved the way for the next significant species of Homo, Homo erectus. Homo erectus marked the next significant leap in human evolution. This species was the first to use fire, hunt large game, and spread across the globe. The average male stood at five feet, 10 inches and weighed around 150 pounds. Changes in shoulder anatomy allowed for better throwing abilities. Males were about 25% larger than females, similar to the size difference seen in Homo sapiens. Due to their wide dispersion over time, Homo erectus had many subspecies. Their brains averaged 1,000 cubic centimeters, with earlier members having smaller brains and later ones having sizes closer to modern humans. The substantial increase in brain size from Homo habilis to Homo erectus enabled more complex behaviors and innovations. Homo erectus first appeared about two million years ago with fossils found in both Asia and Africa, making their exact origin uncertain. Solid evidence indicates that they controlled fire around 400,000 years ago, although they may have used it much earlier. In Kenya, 1.4 million year old artifacts were found that had been heated to 400 degrees Celsius. While there is debate about earlier evidence, the consensus is that Homo erectus controlled fire by at least 1.5 million years ago, likely by 1 million years ago. Fire brought numerous advantages, such as warmth, protection from predators, and possibly fostering social bonds around campfires, which could have been crucial for cultural evolution. It is believed that Homo habilis developed the first language, so Homo erectus likely had the ability to communicate effectively. Cooking was another major use of fire, making food more digestible and reducing the energy required for digestion. Cooking also sterilized food, making it safer to eat. The ability to cook food may have provided the extra nutrition needed to support a larger brain. Drying meat using fire could have been an important step in human history, allowing for food storage. Fire also improved hunting techniques Early humans could start grass fires to control pest populations or drive animals into traps. Fire-hardened spears and stone-tipped spears, such as those found from the late surviving Homo erectus subspecies, Peking man, indicate advanced tool-making skills. The hand ax was a versatile tool used for butchering meat, processing plants, and many other tasks. There is also a possibility that Homo erectus made seafaring vessels. While no boats have been found, Evidence of habitation on isolated islands suggests they might have traveled across open seas. In 2008, Russian researchers found primitive stone tools on Socotra, an island 150 miles off the Horn of Africa and 240 miles from Yemen. These tools, estimated to be between 500,000 to 1 million years old, fall within the time frame of Homo erectus, suggesting they might have used boats. Homo erectus also lived in caves which provided protection from the elements and predators. The stigma of cavemen does not do justice to their intelligence and adaptability. Homo erectus was a crucial step in human evolution, pioneering controlled fire, complex tools, potential seafaring, and possibly a complex culture. They paved the way for all future hominins, new species. Homo erectus was so widespread that it led to the evolution of new species making the story of human history quite complex. 
Anthropologists are still uncertain about the exact relationships between these early humans. One significant species that emerged was Homo antecessor, which first appeared in Western Europe around 1.4 million years ago. Some theories suggest that Homo antecessor was an intermediate species between Homo erectus and later European species, though this is still a theory that could change with future discoveries. The next species to appear was Homo heidelbergensis, which shows a closer resemblance to modern humans. Homo heidelbergensis had a brain volume of approximately 1,230 cubic centimeters, only slightly smaller than that of contemporary humans. The species also had a smaller brow and jaws. The average male stood about five feet, nine inches tall and weighed around 140 pounds. Interestingly, at one point, Homo heidelbergensis individuals averaged over seven feet in height. According to Lee Berger of the University of Witwatersrand, tibia and femoral remains indicate that the populations of Homo heidelbergensis between 350,000 and 400,000 years ago were routinely over seven feet tall. This remarkable growth was likely a short-lived adaptation during a grassland expansion, allowing them to exploit large ungulates and antelopes. Imagine encountering a tribe where everyone was over seven feet tall. Homo heidelbergensis was also an advanced toolmaker. A 400 year old site in Germany revealed the use of fire-hardened spears for hunting. Eight spears were found alongside stone tools and horse remains, with one spear thrust through an animal's pelvis. Another site in Germany discovered a spear lodged in the ribs of a straight tusked elephant. These were not merely burnt sticks, but highly sophisticated tools balanced one third of the way down the shaft suggesting they were designed for throwing, much like a modern-day javelin. In tests, athletes were able to throw recreations of these spears up to 230 feet. The ability to take down horses and elephants with such weapons shows how dominant these early humans were. These findings indicate that ancient humans were creating highly sophisticated and deadly hunting tools 400,000 years ago, demonstrating their advanced capabilities and adaptability, the Neanderthals. Heidelbergensis populations in Europe evolved into Homo neanderthalensis, commonly known as Neanderthals. Neanderthals had short, stocky bodies, thick bones, heavy brows, and large noses. The earliest Neanderthal fossils date back to 450,000 years ago. They are known from numerous fossils and stone tools. Despite their reputation as simple, brutish cavemen, this portrayal is a misconception. Although Neanderthals may have been primitive in social skills, their brains were actually larger than those of modern humans. Modern human brains average about 1,300 cubic centimeters, while Neanderthal brains averaged 1,600 cubic centimeters, 300 cubic centimeters more. This significant difference is notable. For comparison, Homo erectus had a brain volume of about 1,000 cubic centimeters. If modern humans, with just 300 cubic centimeters more brain volume than Homo erectus, are considered much smarter, one might assume that Neanderthals with 300 cubic centimeters more brain volume than modern humans were geniuses. However, that's not the case. While Neanderthals had larger brains, they were not necessarily smarter. Their extra brain volume was used for enhanced vision and smell. We cannot be entirely certain about the behavior and capabilities of these early humans, but the fact that they had better sensory abilities than us is still remarkable. Around 400,000 years ago, several hominid species existed worldwide. Homo heidelbergensis and Homo neanderthalensis lived in Europe, while Homo erectus continued to thrive in other parts of the world. Homo sapiens. The origins of Homo sapiens, encompassing every human around the world today, remain somewhat mysterious. While some believe our species evolved from populations of Homo erectus in Africa, others suggest it was from Homo heidelbergensis. Regardless, Homo sapiens first appeared around 350,000 years ago. Our species exhibited several anatomical differences compared to other hominids. Human skeletons are relatively graceful and fragile, which played a crucial role in our success. Our weaker build facilitated the formation of groups in cooperation. Additionally, we developed weaker muscles, while our brain growth and complexity accelerated through metabolomy evolution. A study using GCM's methodology revealed major differences in brain regions between humans, chimps, and macaques, 
particularly in the prefrontal cortex and lateral part of the cerebral cortex. These regions are associated with complex associative functions such as reasoning, planning, social behavior, and general intelligence. This evolution gave Homo sapiens distinct advantages over other hominid species, making us smarter and better at teamwork. Around 300,000 years ago, Homo sapiens coexisted with several hominid species. One of these was Homo naledi, a mysterious species with a small brain that showed little evolution since the time of the Australopithecines. Despite some Homo-like characteristics, Homo naledi was more akin to Australopithecus, with hands adapted for climbing and a diet of roots and tubers. It likely represented a late surviving primitive ape lineage that did not progress like other hominids. Before Homo sapiens left Africa 70,000 years ago, human populations were distributed across various regions. Neanderthals lived in Europe, Denisovans occupied parts of Northern Asia and Russia, advanced Homo erectus populations were found in Southern Asia, and Homo floresiensis, or hobbits, inhabited Indonesia. Additionally, Homo luzonensis, a newly discovered species, exhibited primitive features and likely evolved from populations of Homo erectus in the area. These discoveries highlight the existence of numerous undiscovered human species. Interbreeding, expanding horizons. Around 70,000 years ago, Homo sapiens embarked on a journey out of Africa, pioneering the use of bows as hunting tools. This technological advancement significantly enhanced our hunting efficiency, enabling us to shoot arrows further and rapidly in succession. Bows not only facilitated large game hunting, but also conferred a distinct advantage in warfare, allowing us to outmaneuver and outmatch other hominid species despite their physical strength. As Homo sapiens dispersed, they encountered and interbred with Neanderthals and Denisovans, enriching our genetic diversity. This interbreeding bestowed upon us genes better adapted to colder climates, influencing traits such as skin color, brain function, and sleep patterns. Sub-Saharan Africans who remained in Africa retained a predominantly pure Homo sapiens genetic profile, while other populations acquired varying degrees of Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA. As humans spread globally, many other hominid species gradually became extinct. By 20,000 years ago, Homo sapiens stood as the sole surviving species of Homo, having outcompeted and likely driven the others to extinction. Yet remnants of these extinct species persist within our genetic makeup. Modern humans outside Africa typically carry about 2% Neanderthal DNA, with some populations in Oceania possessing up to 5% Denisovan DNA alongside Neanderthal ancestry. For instance, Sherpas, indigenous to the mountainous regions of Nepal, exhibit genetic adaptations inherited from Denisovans, enhancing their ability to thrive at high altitudes. The discovery of a super-athlete gene derived from Denisovans highlights the profound impact interbreeding had on our adaptation to diverse environments. The human story is one of both triumph and loss. While Homo sapiens emerged as the dominant species, we also absorb genetic traces of our extinct relatives, enriching our genetic heritage. Although these other hominid species are no longer extant, they continue to influence our biology and our understanding of human evolution. Homo sapiens have existed for over 300,000 years, but we're just one of many human species. Some earlier hominids resembled apes more than modern humans, while others spread globally millions of years before us. These diverse ancestors shaped our evolution, and their genetic legacy remains within us.